the voice of Yoda and Fozzie Bear has reached out on social media and said that he's not very happy with what they're doing with the Muppets over at Sesame Street. Let's talk about that on That Park Place. Hello, I am Jonas J. Campbell, an investigative reporter for That Park Place. Some people call me a culture noticer. That's just me. That's what I have in my Twitter bio uh, or, or my X bio. Vash, uh, would you like to notice some culture today? I would like to notice some culture today, specifically from the voice of Yoda. You sick Yoda. Oh, that's 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 very good. I can't do Yoda, but I can do. Yeah, anyways, uh, <laughs> we will read this one in English, even though we could translate it into Wookiee. This from that park place and a WDW pro Frank Oz lashes out at disrespect of Jim Henson. Is the world turning against children's propaganda? I, I, I think that's an accurate word for what's going on here, but uh, you can make your own conclusions. In an age where the lines between entertainment and the real world increasingly blur, the call for a return to the core essence of storytelling has never been louder or more, more critical. It's particularly true in an election year, that's what this is, where the United States and the Western world is more divided than in the past century aficionados of good i can almost hear pro aficionados of good fiction all over the planet have a plea for escapism that would be the issue that they have here of course Correct. um for stories that transport us beyond the boundaries of our current realities politics and the ever pervasive hot topics that dominate our daily lives the argument here isn't for ignorance of societal issues but for the preservation of fiction and entertainment as sanctuaries for the human spirit uh, there's a discussion here of uh, Sweet Baby Ink, but uh, Vash, were you going to say something? I didn't mean to interrupt you. Well, no, no, no. I mean, uh, Jay Roslow uh, pointed this out beautifully during that triumph presentation last week. The Disney cone, right? Uh, leaving out the world beyond so that you can be immersed in the world you're in. This is the epitome of escapism and why it should be preserved, uh, not just for Disney products, but also for all fiction, like you were saying. Yep, up uh, very true. And and this is the whole point. We're supposed to have escapism so that we can remove ourselves from the world. And if there are better messages on how to behave or how to how how to be a better person within that fiction, we can then absorb that and be at the moment that we are free from the idea of being in the world. We can bring good ideas back to the world instead of being preached to about the world. So, Let's 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 read about what uh, this little uh, back and forth between Frank Oz and his creation is all about. Perhaps that is why it is so lovely to see Frank Oz in the screenshot below, finally declaring that we should all have what we all should know. Sorry, what we all should have known was true. For Oz is no Republican, no fan of Donald Trump. Oz is simply a puppeteer who, in his better moments, realizes that children's puppets belong in teaching the alphabet, not postulating about politics. Oz responded to a post from Cookie Monster writing, uh, Me hate shrinkflation. Me cookies are getting smaller. And uh, he wrote, I'm shocked to see a news article on Cookie Monster talking about shrinkflation. Jim would never have allowed this. The Sesame Street Muppets need to live in their own pure world, not our world. What has happened to the integrity of the character and to the integrity of Sesame Workshop? There's a lot to unpack here. Uh, for those who are somehow not aware, Frank Oz is the original performer of Cookie Monster, uh, if I'm not mistaken. I don't think you are. I believe that is a an accurate statement right there. And uh, um, he's Jim also Hens he's also Miss Piggy, and he's he's of course the voice of Yoda, as you pointed out, Vash Guy. Frank Oz is essential to the Muppets and what they used to be. And of course the Muppets used to be the same. The Muppets of Sesame Street as they're kind of branded now uh, are all creations of Frank Oz and Jim Henson. Jim, Jim was very protective of the Muppets. Uh, I'm sorry, not, not the Muppets, but, but Sesame Street in particular, because he kind of knew the effect on children. He knew uh, how that could necessarily be perversed, right? Um, and, and obviously, uh, I mean, Michael Eisner was a, was a huge fan, wanted, wanted Sesame Street very, very badly, but because of some rights issues, couldn't actually secure them. And, <laughs> and Jim was, was not exactly... Uh, um, <laughs> he wasn't exactly down about that for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and he, he assured Michael, ah, don't worry, I'll give you something that's just as good. And unfortunately, we never got to see that because of his untimely passing. But um, this is, I think this is really profound, what Frank Oz is saying, because it really keys in on the original intent for uh, Sesame Street itself and Jim Henson's intention with it. 
I, I would I would fully agree. And this this talking point in particular, shrinkflation is a, a talking point that is very specific to a political leader uh, right now. This is not generally an issue that people are talking about. I think it's a deflection, that issue. I don't want to go get too deep into politics. But uh, if we if, if, if there was one political party and, and Cookie Monster just decided to uh, to to weigh in on disagreements between producers of television shows and the Oscars, then then maybe we would see the same thing on the other side here that maybe Cookie Monster should be talking about cookies and how much he wants cookies instead of talking about. Well. A deflection on the part of the White House. This is this is this is not a this is not really that important of an issue when it's a it's a symptom of the larger economy. I'll I'll right. just uh, I'll, I'll be I'll be more clear in saying this. I I think the entire idea of pushing the idea of sh shrinkflation is to defend a certain uh, a certain uh, president's unpopular political stances more than it's actually commenting on the state of the world or a concept of like treating people with respect which is something that you can that can be viewed as a political issue but there is only in this case in this case this is only a political issue shrinkflation is the idea that in order to uh keep selling product companies are reducing the amount of product that is being offered in offering it in a way that seems like it is the same amount of product. Yes. This is in response to the 30% rise in food costs in the United States. You can debate with me on the figure that is not really the issue that we're talking about here. It might be a different figure. Right. But the idea that, that Sesame Street is being used as a political tool in any way or to have a character that should be about how much he likes cookies needs to be used to further po further the political agenda of a particular political party is gross and it is off putting and it is the very thing that the Disney company is struggling with right now. And and this and we've seen this before, uh, not just with Cookie Monster, but also Almo, you know, pu pushing this <laughs> certain medical procedures. Right. It's actually yes. part of a lawsuit. Uh, it, it's it's to the perversion of these characters and utilizing them in order to push certain agendas from adults uh, onto children is uh, is is most disgusting, I must say. Right. I, I Now, we don't yet have a clip to see whether or not Cookie Monster is going to stop everything in the next episode of Sesame Street to uh, to bring out uh, another puppet in order to talk about uh, how we all need to. Uh, attack all of these snack manufacturers. Yeah, it's not it's 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 not anything else. It's the snack manufacturers that are the yes. problem. My goodness. Yeah. All right. Uh, bef before we get into too much danger here, uh, let's let, let's wrap this up. Uh, Frank Oz has his he he's been a semi vocal critic of what the Disney company has done with the the remaining section of the Muppets as well. So some could say that that he is he's he's predisposed to dislike the 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 new legacy of the Muppets and the new legacy of Sesame Street. But in this case, we want to throw it to the audience and ask you, what do you think of this statement by Frank Oz? Did he go too far? Is he maybe making something out of nothing? Are we making something out of nothing? Uh, that being said, if you uh, if you need to get boned up on politics, there's a channel that you can uh, that, that I recommend you check out. It's called Sesame Street. Uh, go over there and uh, and see uh, see see what all of your five year olds need to know about the uh, the world today and how to vote in the next election. That being said, maybe in the meantime, you could like this video. Uh, again, consider leaving a comment. But more importantly, if you wouldn't mind subscribing to That Park Place for all the news that should be fun. Thanks for watching That Park Place News. For more information, consider checking out www.thatparkplace.com. And don't forget to subscribe, share, like, and send this out on your favorite social media accounts.